Good afternoon. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. Today, we are able to rejoice in our privilege to receive the body and blood of Jesus. Many places do not have enough priests to serve the faithful and bring Jesus to the altar. Let us sing and rejoice as we thank God for his great gifts of Eucharist and priesthood. This liturgy is being offered for the living and deceased members of our parish family. Altar flowers are donated by the Nicolosi family. Let us begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 616. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, number 616. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Amen. We gather together on this great feast of Corpus Christi, where we remind ourselves that God comes to us in a very unique way in the gift of the Holy Eucharist. So my brothers and sisters, as we are prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment and call to mind our own sins, seeking the mercy and forgiveness of our Lord. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The readings can be found on page 1091. 1091. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. The words to the antiphon of the psalm can be found at number 78. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Lauda Zion Salvatorem, Lauda Zion Salvatorem, Lo, the angels' food is given to the pilgrim who have striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound a victim willing, Paschal lamb its life blood spilling, manna to the Father's sent. Very bread, good shepherd, send us, Jesus of thy love befriend us. Thou refresh us, thou defend us, thine eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. Thou who all things canst and knowest, who on earth such food bestowest, Grant us with thy saints thou lowest, where the heavenly feast thou showest, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to the Pharisees and scribes. Excuse me. (laughs) Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. 
Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. How well did you listen to the readings today? Who is Melchizedek? All right, that heard something good there. First of all, he's a very mysterious character in the Bible. He's only mentioned in two places, in today's first reading in Genesis and in the Psalm 110. It tells us he's, his name means, Melchizedek means king of righteousness. He was a priest of God most high. He was the king of Salem. Where's that? Don't say Massachusetts. <laughs> Salem is the ancient name for Jerusalem. And what does he offer? Bread and wine. So in the book of Genesis, we read about a priest king whose name is King of Righteousness who is the king of Jerusalem, and he offers an unbloody sacrifice of bread and wine. Does any of this sound familiar? In ancient Israel, not all sacrifices were of animals. There was a sacrifice known as the Todah sacrifice. The Todah sacrifice is an offering to thank God for his blessings using bread and wine. And so the context of this passage in, the, in the, the first reading today has a backstory which we won't get into, but basically Abram, before he became Abraham, had this battle and God led him through the battle of these different kings and he was victorious. So he presented himself to Melchizedek to make the sacrifice of thanksgiving for safety and, and, and success in victory in battle. And then Abraham offered a tenth of everything. That's the biblical origin of tithing. Abram offered, sacrificed some of his own wealth as a sign of thanksgiving to God. So completely side note, the collection at Mass is not something extra or made up. The collection is part of the liturgy which is intended to be a sacrificial offering you make to God to aid in the work of God. So this character, Melchizedek, is kind of very mysterious. And without going into exhaustive detail explanation, we see how the Old Testament is really a preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ. That's how as Catholics we ought to read the Old Testament, a preparation, a foreshadowing. And so Melchizedek is a sign, a prefigurement, a foreshadowing foreshadowing of the eternal high priest, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the king of righteousness who offers his life on the cross. This sacrificial offering for the forgiveness of sins makes him a priest. And Jesus is the authentic king of peace. And with his disciples at the Last Supper, he offers a thanksgiving sacrifice of bread and wine. And as you may recall, the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. So on this feast today of Corpus Christi, known as the body of Christ, the church celebrates the greatest gift God has given us, the gift of him, his very self in the Holy Eucharist. And I have to say, as Catholics, myself included, because we have a liturgical format and we repeat the same words, 
sometimes we can fall into ritual. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, God comes on the altar. Yeah. Like, think about what you're saying. I mean, if we really believe what we're saying, it's transformative. And so what it really challenges us is to grow in faith. Let's take a little closer at the gospel. Today's gospel is taken from Luke. I almost read the wrong one. But this gospel is known as the miracle of the loaves. It's recorded in all four of the gospels. There's a line in the gospel where the apostles say to Jesus, dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodgings and provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I was listening to this, this, this talk. The word in the original Greek for deserted can also mean a lonely place, but it can also mean a desert. So think about this. Luke, the author of the gospel, is describing the scene of a large crowd of people who are hungry, wandering in a desert. Does that sound familiar? To any Jew, at that time of Jesus, they would see this as an allusion to the exodus and the wilderness wandering when they left Egypt. And what happened in the book of Exodus for God's people when they were in the desert? They were hungry. And God miraculously provided them manna, bread from heaven. It was their daily bread. It was their food for the journey. So one of the greatest miracles in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament was when God provided abundantly for his people, giving them manna every day, except on the Sabbath. They were to collect just enough for that day. In other words, God will provide for his people for that day, not to be worried about what the future holds. That's what we mean when we say, give us this day our daily bread. So the story, the story in Luke's gospel today is intended to call to memory the miracle of the manna. But Luke's story is also intended to point forward to the Last Supper. In fact, the verbs describing Jesus' action in the story are take, blessed, broke, and give. These are the exact same four verbs used at the Last Supper. So after Jesus blessed the loaves and fishes, he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the crowd. The scriptures tell us they all ate and were satisfied. This means that they didn't just take a little piece, they ate till they were filled. And after that, there were 12 wicker baskets left over. The gospel is showing us a Eucharistic miracle. Jesus provides abundantly and nourishes the hunger of his people. You've heard the song, Jesus satisfies the hungry heart. In other words, Jesus, who provides for his people in the scene, the reader is supposed to see Jesus God, and they're trying to show that Jesus is God. The Eucharistic miracle recalls the great work of God to the Israelites when they were in the desert, and this Eucharistic miracle prepares the people for the great gift that Jesus gives at the Last Supper. Finally, the second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Did you know this letter predates the Gospels? So that means that this letter that Paul's writing, is the oldest written account of the Last Supper. And it's interesting to note that Paul, St. Paul begins by saying this, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. This is a powerful sentence because it describes a concept in our Catholic faith that we call apostolic tradition. Before anything was written in the New Testament, there was a living and vibrant and active faith that was being passed down. 
The Greek word for handed down could also be translated traditioned. So in other words, Paul could have said this. You could translate it, I handed on to you or I traditioned to you. See, apostolic tradition is the handing down of what is received. Jesus handed down to his apostles and the apostles hand down to their successors. And what we see in today's letter from Paul is that this describes the early liturgy. Paul passes on the tradition that he has received. Jesus takes bread and says, this is my body that is for you. Jesus takes a cup of wine. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. In other words, Jesus transforms the bread and wine into his body and blood. His body is given in sacrifice out of love. And his blood seals the covenant between God and us. And Paul writes, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Or let's say it another way. Every time you and I celebrate this ritual we call the Eucharist, you make present the loving sacrifice of the cross in an unbloody manner so that my love for you can be renewed in you. Does this make sense or am I getting too... Like this, like, this is awesome. This is incredible. I'm priest 20 years and I never <laughs> reflected on this this deeply. What happened that we read about 2,000 years ago, like the Mass is like a time machine. We're brought, that, that, that event is made present here to us. See, God from the beginning of time has been preparing to communicate himself to us. He prepared his people by Melchizedek's Todah sacrifice. God liberated his people from the slavery of Egypt. God fed his people as they wandered in the desert. He gave them spiritual food to nourish them on the journey to the promised land. All of these events prepared us for the coming of Jesus Christ, who gave his life to liberate, liberate us from the slavery of sin. He gives us his church to hand down his teachings through the word of God and through the gift of the liturgy, what we call apostolic succession. Jesus gives himself to us to nourish us on our journey. In every Mass, Jesus speaks to us in the inspired word of God. In every Mass, the unbloody sacrifice of thanksgiving is made present on the altar. In every Mass, Jesus communicates himself to us. He gives us his body, blood, soul, and divinity in Holy Communion. He says to us, I give myself to you. I love you. I want to be united to you. I want to share a holy communion. Do we comprehend this mystery before us? On Pentecost, we read this line. It was Jesus' prayer. He says, I pray for those who will believe in me, that's you and I, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That's our destiny. Jesus wants us to be one with his Father. He wants us to be one with one another. Let me close with this. You may ask, why bread and wine? Let me share a reflection from, you may have remembered this name, uh, Fulton Sheen, Archbishop Fulton Sheen. This is him writing maybe 60, 70 years ago. And I can't imitate his voice, but. Why did our blessed Lord use bread and wine as the elements of this memorial? First of all, because no two substances in nature better symbolize unity than bread and wine. As bread is made from a multiplicity of grains of wheat and wine is made from a multiplicity of grapes, so the many 
who believe are made one in Christ. Second, no two substances in nature have to suffer more to become what they are than bread and wine. Wheat has to pass through the rigors of winter, be ground beneath the calvary of a mill, and then subjected to purging fire before it can become bread. Grapes, in their turn, must be subjected to the Gethsemane of a wine press and have their life crushed from them to become wine. Thus do they symbolize the passion and the sufferings of Christ and the condition of our salvation. For our Lord said, unless we die to ourselves, we cannot live in him. And the third reason is that there are no two substances in nature which have more traditionally nourished man than bread and wine. In bringing these elements to the altar, we are equivalently bringing ourselves. When bread and wine are taken or consumed, they are changed into man's body and blood. But when Jesus takes bread and wine, he changes them into himself. As the bread and wine come forward today, remember, we are bringing ourselves. We put ourselves on this altar so that we too may be transformed. The sacrificial love of Jesus Christ strengthens us to live a life of sacrificial love in our daily lives. We have an incredible Heavenly Father who loves each and every one of you unconditionally. Our Heavenly Father gave us his Son to rescue, to heal, to restore, and to transform us. Our Heavenly Father gave us the Holy Spirit so that we can be close to God and that we can be filled with the Spirit to live and love like Jesus Christ in our thoughts, words, and actions. Today on this eve of Father's Day, let us praise our Heavenly Father as beloved sons and daughters. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were men. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of God. And I pray to God. Amen. By offering his body and blood for us, Jesus reconciles the world to the Father. Therefore, we can present our needs to God with confidence. That the church which draws her life from the Eucharist may worship this mystery with ever deeper faith and devotion. We pray to the Lord. For our Pope, bishops, and all clergy, remind them of their sacredness, of their vocation, and fill their ministries with joy and peace as they bring your body and blood into the midst, into our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater awareness and reverence of Christ's presence, that we may recognize the many ways Christ is present in the Eucharist, in the scriptures, and in one another and approach our celebrations with faith 
and reverence. We pray to the Lord. For all extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist, particularly those who bring communion to the sick, that they will grow ever closer to Christ and be signs of God's love to those with whom they share the sacrament. We pray to the Lord. For the Eucharist devotions that we celebrate, especially the end of this year of the real presence, may we always find comfort in adoring the most blessed sacrament of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all new graduates, that they may use the knowledge and skills that they have acquired to advance God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For the people of the parish and all families that our merciful Father may continue to bless us, keep us, and help us grow together in love and faith. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially the living and the deceased fathers, and are recently deceased, that we may share the eternal life that Jesus promised to those who feed on the bread from heaven. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The Lord here. Father, may we who worship the mystery of the Lord's body and blood always experience within us the power of his redemption through Christ our Lord. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 930, Taste and See, number 930. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, 
establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where we offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those who we venerate, especially the glorious as of her Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, and Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. I need this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask that you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne to the, by your hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body, blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have gone, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter. Rejoicing in the gift of the Eucharist, we join in singing number 930, Taste and See, number 930.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Um, at the end of Mass, I so will have a special blessing for fathers, for Father's Day. And if any father would like a, a flower, please come forward and be happy to distribute to you. Um, also, please keep, keep Deacon Ken in your prayers. As you know, he had a procedure done and they found a mass in his head and it turned out to be cancerous. So he'll be undergoing uh, treatments uh, beginning this next week, I believe. So you can just imagine all that he's going for. I talked with him the other day and he wants to come. He sends his greetings and asks for your prayers. So we continue to support him at this time. Lastly, uh, uh, that's it, I don't say anything more. Have a wonderful Father's Day. Let me get the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel. Amen. Having received the bread of life, we go forth rejoicing in the love of God and singing number 945, I am the bread of life, number 945.